Scotty Yokes, and welcome back to Bacon and Eggs. I'm Tyler Carlin. And I'm Ethan Edge Hill. And we've got one more back to school movie for you. Or we, well, it's more like a whole school year. So kiss the prettiest girl in the room. And find your tunnel song. Because today we're bringing you the perks of being a wallflower. <laughs> I'm be crying over this movie, Ethan. Just weeping, openly. <laughs> openly weeping. Openly weeping. Sobs. Ethan, this movie released September 21st, 2012. You had to remember was... what month <laughs> nine was. <laughs> I did. I was like, because September always trips me up because 10 is October, and I never can remember they're right next to each other. It's the but one August. we're in right now. I know, I know. It's on my computer. It is September 18th. It is exactly six months to my birthday. Ooh. Yep. Is this the day you got your driver's license? Uh, no. Oh, I got mine May 2nd because May 1st was a sun. I got mine June 29th. Nice. It's 16 and three months that you had to, to be. Oh, I got my permit May 2nd. 15 and a half, right? Yeah. I got my permit September 29th. Nice. Anyway, this movie released September 21st, 2012, 2,188 days ago, which seems like a lot of days, on a shoestring. I say shoestring every week, regardless of the dollar <laughs> size. No, you regard, don't. No, you don't. Regard. When it's $290 million, you're like, wow. <laughs> It just really was. I mean, what are those little things called on the end of shoestrings? Aglets. This was an aglet budget of thirteen million dollars. <laughs> thirteen million is low, but it looks it like is, it. It looks like a thirteen million dollar movie. It definitely does. I mean, Ezra Miller doesn't wake up for under fifteen million dollars today. Is that accurate? Is that a fact? Ooh, I doubt it. Do, do you know that? I don't know. He's been in what this? Ezra Miller movie. makes fifteen million a movie. Robert Downey Jr. makes fifty to be Iron Man. <laughs> Ezra Miller's Credence. Okay. <laughs> Your point? He was in this. He was in Trainwreck. He was in Fantastic Beasts and Fantastic Beasts. He's the Flash, Ethan. He's, that was a name you knew before Iron Man. He's the Flash on TV. No, he's the Flash in Justice League. Is he? Oh. Yeah. On TV, it's... Uh, Whatever. Grant oh, Gustin. Oh, Grant Gustin. God, he's yeah, good. He's the Flash in the movie. Well, he's he's a terrible. Barry Allen. He was terrible. You didn't like him? Is the Flash? No. Yeah. You know, coming up in like a month's time, you and I are going to be doing a crossover episode with another podcast where we talk about Justice League on their show, and they're going to talk about Wonder Woman on our show. Is that, we're going to be here too. Is that uh? <laughs> the way we're not? They're not just doing a takeover. <laughs> no, it's no, a takeover. Not. The mother <laughs> breaks over. <laughs> uh, so okay, well, is that confirmed? Are we are we good on that? <laughs> Can we that is as that? far as I know. Yeah, that's that's confirmed, I guess. I don't know. If it doesn't happen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here it's first. It's not our fault. <laughs> it's not, yeah, we're doing what it takes. But it ain't my fault. Uh... Pretty well received, 85% critic rating, 89% audience rating, which I'm a little surprised by. I would have thought the audience didn't like this as much, but a 67 on Metacritic, so a lot of disparity there as well. Not as bad as last week. What was last week? To the, all the boys I've loved before, where it was like a 64 Metacritic and a 97 critic on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, I believe it. That movie, <laughs> I tell you, I've been thinking about that movie a lot, and I just love Peter Kavinsky. I've been thinking about this movie a lot because we watched that movie, which is why we're now doing this movie, and I can't stop thinking about this this movie because of this, that movie how many times did you cry watching this movie zero get out of town i did not You're cry lying. i did not cry i cried i literally and i'm not like, like sometimes i'm not afraid to cry in movies it just didn't at whatever reason it didn't yank on me this time it's not like i was sitting there like i'm not not that kind of guy that cries in not movies. that kind of guy i'll tell you usually i'll well up during a movie but i don't necessarily cry watching this movie literal tears like more than one tear streamed down my face and my wife was like tyler time for bed and i was like i'll, I'll be there in a minute okay <sighs> okay no I, I, like, I definitely got that little like <laughs> moment where you just like you do the, the quiet self sniff it was literally like the moment i i watched the last 30 minutes of the movie today because my wife called me to bed but 30 minutes before the movie's over is the scene where he blacks out in the cafeteria yeah tears ethan i would say at least six tears came out of my face that's the moment that got to you out of all of them no there's three okay well we'll, we'll get to that <laughs> we have some other stuff to do first so uh we, we gotta give a binary we gotta give positive and negative reviews and then a binary yeah so you have a positive so, review for me i do this comes from jamie niche at cineview uh they say a surprisingly spot-on directorial debut cementing chbosky's voice as one to be listened to his directorial style complements the material to a t and helps to deliver a film that's as earnest heartfelt and charming as coming-of-age dramas get four out of five fair enough that's 
that's that's a neat little thing they got there from I have Deborah Ross from the Spectator who says this is boring and it's partially that believability thing how many alienated outsiders do you have to gather before they become insiders alternatively they are all so good looking and so smart and well healed that they are winners surely I'll tell you that was small part of my complaint about this movie but that's my complaint about most movies where like so and so is a dork loser it's like yeah, so and so is hot okay Scott Pilgrim was a dork loser everybody Michael loves Sarah. Simon right. whoever that kid is <laughs> that guy's hot right <laughs> Emma like, Watson that girl's Hermione the fact that you know Augustus Waters had a missing leg didn't make him weird it made him hot <laughs> made him real hot <laughs> Welcome to Bacon and Eggs, where Tyler discusses which boys from movies are hot. <laughs> I would say Augustus Waters is better looking than Charlie. Is he better looking than Peter Kavinsky? No. Don't you talk about baby like that? Nobody puts baby in a corner. That's true. He is baby. <laughs> Baby's pretty attractive. But Peter Kavinsky... I, I didn't realize this. I was watching, uh... Not rewatching the film, but I saw a clip from the film. Peter Kavinsky is described as being the most popular boy in school. I didn't... That would have been a nice detail for me to realize watching the movie. They... Because he otherwise just seemed like they a danced. guy. They danced... They danced sort of up to it and like almost said it, but didn't say it, say it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it is said. Like that's a line in the movie is that he is the most popular boy in school. Right. But it's like easily just. Right. I completely forgot about that. I wasn't paying attention. She said that. So. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe that's a you problem, bro. That's a, that's definitely a me problem. Okay. So we got, uh, we need, uh, we need a binary. So I'll give it a one. I give it a one as well. I think. Not only should you see this movie, I think you need to see this movie. I think it's important, and I think it's good. And I think it's really good for people who... I think it's especially good. It is a movie about uber introverts for... Or maybe not uber introverts, but like uber outsiders for insiders. And I say that because the uh, insiders in the movie are like, listen to all this obscure music. Come on, Eileen. Like, that's not obscure. I mean, it, it is, though. <laughs> It was in 2012. Okay. Or whenever this was this written. Is the 90s, I suppose. I guess so. I guess it takes place in the 90s. Yeah. It's like a thousand degrees cold in my house. It's always cold in your house. This is not new. I don't like it. No, it's cold on my couch, which is frustrating. But yeah. I'm like shivering in this conversation right now. So I'm going to up the thermostat. You're going to nest it up real quick? I am. I got the nest right here. Ladies and gentlemen, Bacon and Eggs is brought to you by Nest. You go to Amazon. No, it's not. Not a sponsor dot com not a sponsor there's a link in the description to a nest that you can buy <laughs> you can buy a nest with our affiliate code from amazon you cannot buy a nest with our nest affiliate code right because we but are not you know what for you yoke we'll reach out to nest and see what they have to say they might be like you know what this is a great idea we hadn't thought about podcasts before but now we have and we're gonna do it that's how we're gonna make our million right there is we're gonna tell some company about podcasts <laughs> Are you familiar with podcast marketing? No. What? Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you. Are you familiar with what? What is a podcast? <laughs> All right. So we got to do a toothpaste and orange juice. Toothpaste and orange juice. Orange juice. Orange juice. Mm. Hey, you got one? I do. Do you? Yeah. Okay. You got to count it down. Oh, okay. <laughs> we go on three. Okay. No, we go on go. Watch Lethal Three, three two, one. Poorly doctor's constructed offices. algebra word problems. You said doctor's offices? Yeah. <laughs> You ever been in a doctor's office? Yeah, I've been in many doctor's offices. Okay, I, so, have you, but have you been in as, like, an adult where you just, like, you know, you go make an appointment. Like, I made an appointment to see my, my general practitioner, my primary care physician for, like, mm -hmm. a checkup. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. I'm a grown I, person. Well, uh, so I, I lived, <laughs> until last week, I lived seven hours away from my primary care physician. So I was like, I'm going to go to the doctor when I'm sick. And that's it. <laughs> Didn't just get a new PCP in Hampton Roads. Yeah. Did you? No. Exactly. <laughs> but I drove home to see Doctor Raza. Oh, I did not. I did not. Anyway, so I walk in and they're like, "Yeah, well, uh, first of all, um, Mister Edgehill, it's been a minute since you were here as a patient, so we're gonna need to get you a new chart, and we can probably get you in again as a new patient." And I'm like, "I've been seeing my doctor since I was four when my pediatrician died, so." I'm not really a new patient. New. <laughs> yeah, that was what, it's like 1997? I walked, yeah, something like that. It's like <laughs> they acted like they didn't know who I was or like why I was there. And then I walked in and my doctor was like, oh, hey, let's talk about everything that's happened to you in the last 20 years because he's a good doctor and just remembers things. But anyway, so they're like, you need to come in 45 minutes early so you can fill out all your paperwork. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Fine, I'll do it. And then I just waited in the waiting room for an hour and a half. That sucks. 
Yeah, it was just like, and, and I know that that's like a, like a thing. They're like, oh man, doctor's offices, you could be waiting around there for a long time. But it's like, don't call me in. You're giving the Canadians ammo, Ethan. Talk about how wonderful your doctor's office experience was. No, I'm not giving the Canadians ammo for anything. <laughs> yeah, their healthcare might be free. That doesn't mean it's fast. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. But okay, and so then they, I was like, hey, doc, um, I have some kind of allergy and, uh, you know, I can't breathe when I'm, at home, in the place that I live, just the whole town, just the entire area, just anytime I come back here. Uh, and per my insurance, I have to talk to you first before I go see somebody who deals with allergies. And so he's like, all right, cool, we're going to hook you up to this machine that tells you how well you're breathing. And I'm like, I'm not breathing that well. And he's like, well, it's going to tell us. And then the machine was just like, hey, buddy, um, you're going to need to try harder because uh, you're not breathing all that well. And I'm like, thank you, machine. <laughs> thank you so much. I didn't know that. Uh, the, the machine will tell us. <laughs> it was like, uh, d the machine was like, how much do you smoke? And I was like, I don't. It was like, okay, listen. <laughs> anyway, so apparently my lungs suck at being lungs. That's just a, a John Green quote for you. Oh, speaking of they lungs. They don't suck that bad. They don't suck that bad. Sucking at being lungs. Um, How how much money did the tobacco industry give Independence Day to get me to watch this movie? I got my uh, dance right here. <laughs> I've never wanted a cigar so badly in my entire life. Oh man, when Harry Connick's talking I don't about even their, smoke. Their, their victory dance, that's what it is. Yeah. Let's kick the tires and lots of fires, boys. They give them all like cigars and metal casings. Yeah, they're they're like they're pilots. They're the jocks. That, oh my god. They're pilots that's that are going a... off look, they are pilots that are going off to fight the galactic war against a newly found alien race that is murdering cities. Yeah. Oddly effective. Like, Oddly effective. Like, those guys are so in shock at that point that they're just like, yep, another day, we're just jarheads over here. Jarheads. Yeah, but here's my problem, is you mean to tell me that the U.S. government is buying and casing cigars to give to pilots? No. Oh, I'm pretty sure they are. I think I think Harry Connick bought those. I don't know. It looked like I thought I saw them handing them out to all the soldiers. He might have been. Boys, when you land, you that's your Harry victory Connick. dance right here. Oh God. All right. So tell me about poorly constructed algebra problems. Okay. So there's this like thing I keep seeing on the internet where it's like pick a number one through ten. You got you're gonna do it. Okay. One. Okay, now add five. That's six. Now add three. That's nine. <laughs> now subtract the number you started with. One. So. So, eight. <laughs> eight. Very good. Everybody got eight. What are the freaking odds? I'll tell you what the freaking odds are, Ethan. 100%. It's just X minus X plus five plus three. <laughs> <laughs> it's always gonna be eight. It's the it's the Joe Bluth thing. Oh, you haven't Wait. seen Arrested Development? I've seen most of Arrested Development. Since but when? I don't know this. What? Since when? I saw Arrested Development with Jonathan on my parents' couch. He was not the new seasons, but like Jonathan and I talked about Arrested Development at that person's house that we were all at like two weeks ago and you're like i've never seen that show that's not true i've never seen the new seasons you said you hadn't seen the show at all oh i know the show there's always money in the banana stand yeah but that's that's the joe blue thing is he's the he's the magician he's like what's your age in five years well that's your age in five years <laughs> <laughs> these things drive me crazy I also get really frustrated when there's those order of operations problems on Facebook where it's like, what's one plus two times three? And then all the comments are like, wow, if you didn't get 67, you're an actual idiot. You should be <laughs> unproud of yourself and you should probably apologize to your mother. Right. It's like, okay, but it's seven. But like, I don't know how to. Yeah, PEMDAS. PEMDAS. Please eat my avocado salad. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a, twi a trend a trend on Twitter. That was a trend on Twitter for a while was to stop shaming Aunt Sally. <laughs> and people just coming up with with new things that PEMDAS stands for. <laughs> For those of you who learned your math in a different language, <coughs> aka not uh, United States Elementary School, uh, this was uh, this was high school. Miss Sign taught me PEMDAS. Okay, well, I learned it in elementary school. The rest of the world apparently learned it in middle school or high school. Maybe middle school. I definitely learned it in middle school, but we revisited it in Miss Science class. Look, man, all I'm saying is I took fifth grade I... math in second grade. So <laughs> all I'm saying. <coughs> Yeah, how's that working out for you? I do. I hate math. That's how it's working out for me. Let me tell you something about our high school. Our teachers. I don't want to like alarm you or anything. We had two math teachers with math themed names. We had Mr. Oh, Mr. Powers, Powers and Mr. Sign and Miss Sign. <laughs> Get, what, excuse you. Oh. And then we had a gym teacher named Mr. Hard. <laughs>
<laughs> what is this? They're not trying that hard. They're not trying that. It's all a machine, man. We're in the Matrix. It's a simulation. <laughs> we had we had a biology teacher and a history teacher with the same name, man. It's a glitch. Granted, they were quote unquote married, but she could have done way better. I'm talking to you, Mrs. Pitts. You could do better. Wait, we he was a... not a very good teacher. Who? Mr. and Mrs. Pitts. It was a Mrs. or Mr. Pitts. Yeah, he taught uh, world history. I mean, he didn't really teach world. He definitely did not know world history. I did not have that person for world history. I don't even remember this person. It was the same year as biology. I had both of them. I had, I don't remember my biology teacher's name or my world history two teacher's name. Actually, they were both women. Oh, I had Mr. Pitts and Mrs. Pitts for biology. I don't remember and any then, of those people. I'm trying to, do we have any more? ridiculous matchups on names we had a world history teacher named john cozart like the youtuber like the youtuber yeah but he brett link did an ear biscuit with john cozart and i was like <laughs> what get out of my head <laughs> it's all simulation man but yeah mr powers miss sign mr hard fun fact miss sign was the coolest <laughs> miss sign was the she was best. easily so was one mr. of powers. my favorite teachers so was mr power wonderful i didn't have i didn't have bob powers on your birthday he writes happy birthday in japan but i did i did Facebook. have susan sign twice yeah because i had her for good. algebra 2 and ap stats <sighs> which we called ap stat and the whole rest of the world calls ap stats like maths ap stat all i know about high school is that for a long time there was a trend where you'd answer any math question with about eight and i thought it was like a worldwide phenomenon. no that was a john fenley thing it was was one guy in my high school that did that that was john fenley <laughs> entirely john fenley but even then it's like I'll, I'll be playing madden now and they're like it's third and about eight and i'm like about eight about eight he said it he said the thing about eight <laughs> yeah but like yeah i thought it was like i thought it was everywhere i would comment on reddit about eight and be like why is no that, that was getting... like that was like my math class like i had algebra two with john fenley gotcha yeah he was a lot older than us. What was he doing in Algebra 2 with you? It's a senior class. No, it's not. Or a junior class or whatever. It's a junior class. It's a junior class. Yeah. So he was a year older than us. Because I took pre-calc as a senior. Or he was just kind of dumb. John? No. John Fenley, this guy that went to our high school, got, got famous because on Facebook, anytime somebody would be in like the background of a photo, sort of like making a face that was in focus, they would get tagged as John Fenley. Yeah. And it was like a thing there was like hundreds of these perks of being a, a wildflower before we get wallflower right tom petty before we, bef, uh, right before we get RIP. super into perks of what i knew that before we get to, <laughs> life super stop into perks. and restart real quick <laughs> <laughs> whoa oh right david yep, bowie also that. r.i.p <laughs> yeah, he was that guy. Before we get super into it, I want to talk about some movie news. Uh, at the day we're recording this is the day two big movie news has happened. Ethan. Movie news. Movie newsies. There's a lot of movie movies news, news. actually. M movies Culls news. Calls to sack. Darren Chris won an Emmy. Um, that's not movie news. No, that's That TV is specifically news. not movie news. <laughs> yeah, but that's not what I want to talk about. I want to first talk about... Wait a minute. Does Alvin... that mean Darren Chris is like halfway done with an EGOT? Does he have a Tony? Does he not? I would... Mm. That's the hard one to get, man. Not for Darren Chris. I think the uh, right, Oscar but for most, be, for him. The, but that's that's the thing is like the, the people that stand the best chance of egotting start in Broadway. Yeah, start with the Tony because that that's got all three talents for the others locked into one. Right, like you can sing, TV. act, and be on Broadway. Right, I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, but what's your movie news? Okay, so the first, I don't know if this is movie news, but this is entertainment news. Avatar The Last Airbender is coming to Netflix. Not the crappy movie and not the TV series, but a new live action series. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? This is a bad thing. That's what I said. Let it There's die. There's no way this could, here's my problem. Okay, here's here's what I fear people don't want to realize is that, and I'm going to say this and there's going to be some backlash and I'm, I'm ready to face the, p face the music on this. I think there's a possible chance that the reason it didn't work as a live action film before is because the story isn't really that good and it's got a lot of filler episodes and it really only worked as an animated series because you tolerated it because it, you know it's tv and you watch commercials and things. i don't think it is a I, series. you could not have said that any better in any way whatsoever it'd be the same deal if they tried to make an animated pokemon movie not animated like a live, live action, action pokemon movie right it's like you just you put up with the crap that makes it a tv show because you're only watching it because it's pokemon right and then you go see the movies and the movies are like pretty decent actually yeah i really like the first one is amazing Amazing. God, this it's got like the, uh, the the first two are really good because the second one's about Lugia, right? Yeah, and it's got that song, the like the ocarina thing, like my heart will go on, but not. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yeah, that piece of music. Is that Pokemon 2000. Pokemon 2000, I believe. It's about it's about Lugia. 
Right? First one's about Mewtwo. Second one's about you Lugia. And, I... and then third one's about Entei and the girl that's like, Entei is my dad. <laughs> is that the one I need to I need to pull up the You remember freshman year when every Thursday or whatever Friday we would watch a Pokemon movie? Yeah, and it was awesome. I was just thinking about that. Anyway, yeah, but those were good. Like that the mo the scene in the first Pokemon movie where where Ash turns to stone and Pikachu like weeps on him. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm just like, good God. I was not my my nine year old self was not ready for that. Not even nine years old. But yeah, no, no just yeah. after the last airbender, let it let it die. Just do it. Just It doesn't even have to die. You can enjoy it as, you know, a three season TV show. But, right, but let it end. Let it yeah, let it be over. I mean, there is like a follow up TV show that I think probably suffers the same problems. Right. It's like, I, see, I, I never, I, I, I watched Avatar The Last Airbender, and I was like, I don't get it. I got it, but like, I didn't, I wasn't like, man, this is the greatest show ever made. It was like, this is another cartoon. I know, I mean, it was, to me, it was. Just, just for me, I know, I get that I am, I am incorrect about this. People love Avatar The Last Airbender, the TV show. I, I understand, I'm not dissing that at all. But it's like, I, I never, I, I, I watched it, I didn't, it was like, cool, I watched that. I on. watched it, yeah, I, I remember buying the three season set on iTunes and like, binging it. It was like one of the first things I binged because it was before like Netflix and I remember really enjoying it I remember really liking the show but also thinking there's a lot of filler content in here which I have no tolerance for well any any TV show has like any long season TV show has filler content I know it's all very frustrating all of them like it, there's not a sink even Lost man plenty of filler episodes in Lost Lost has one blatant filler episode You're talking about the one with Jack in Thailand I'm talking about the one with the spiders oh with Paolo and Nikki that like yeah we're like Jack and Kate aren't even in it they die yeah and they bury them and then they come Come back to life. Buried this alive. Is the worst episode. Yeah, that's what it's called, isn't it? I don't know what it's called. I think it's called like Paolo. What a stupid episode. Anyway, is there more movie news? Yeah, uh, Captain Marvel trailer dropped today. Cool. All right, so Perks of Being a Wallflower. Yeah, oh, you don't want to talk about No, Captain I absolutely Marvel? don't want to talk about a trailer. I don't want to talk about trailers. Oh, I hate man. trailers. I want trailers to go away forever. I don't think that Marvel should be allowed to make any more trailers. Uh, I really don't. <laughs> I think uh, that Marvel movies should just kind of erupt out of nowhere like Beyonce albums. Because let's be honest, okay, think about it like this. Let's be honest here. If they didn't give you a release date for Avengers 4, right, or a trailer, or a poster, or anything, and you got to next April, and all of a sudden they were like, hey, Avengers 4 comes out next week, are you going to be like, wow, they didn't tell me 12 months ago, I'm not going to go see it. I think I'm not the person to ask. Right, but Avengers 4 is a movie for people that have already seen 20 other movies. <laughs> It's going to be it's so It's like you great. could keep busting out Avengers movies and people are going to go flock to them in mass no matter what. Yeah, because they're so good. In case you're listening to this, somebody over at Disney, stop making trailers, stop announcing your movies way too early and ruining everything. Guardians 3 is never going to happen. Right, but like I already know they're working on the new Spider-Man. So like obviously Spider-Man's not dead. But Miles Morales is It's not going to be Miles Morales. <laughs> stop it. Get some help. <laughs> He's even in the video game, man. Neat. Just Michael Jordan, stop it, get some help face. Michael Jordan <laughs> dot GIF. Stop. I, I have no I, no so interest in talking about... Captain Marvel comes out. Okay, so it is... Captain Marvel comes out in March, right? Right. Yeah, okay, so it is six months from March. That is an entire half year. As we're recording really this right March? now, it's six months until my birthday. Is it really March that it comes out? Pretty sure. Captain Marvel... I thought it was February. Nope, March 8th. So we're just, we're, we're 10 days under six months till this movie you know comes where, out. You know where I'm going to be 10 days under six months from now? You think, the, the problem with this, that as I have, is they already made a trailer for Captain Marvel. It's called The End of Infinity War. Oh, yeah. Remember that post credit scene? It's like, yeah. hey, by the way, Captain Marvel's coming, and that's all you need, man. I don't need, you know, to, to know about what Carol Danvers is going to be doing. I don't want to know. I don't want to have any idea. I didn't watch a single trailer for Star Wars The Force Awakens, and I wrote in a blog on Patreon yesterday about how that was the greatest movie-seeing experience of my entire life. You think that The Force Awakens was the best movie-watching experience of your entire Absolutely life? Absolutely was. Absolutely. Hands down. Oh, I don't know. It's a toss-up between that and Infinity War. Oh, it was so much better than Infinity War. Like, seeing The Force Awakens for the first time was so much better than Infinity War. I remember when Absolutely. the fanfare started it was like oh god right it's like <laughs> it's I, happening. I, I knew nothing about the force awakens i knew that there was a black guy in it that's pretty revolutionary okay that's all i knew about it the force awakens is that there was a black guy in it as a stormtrooper that's it that's the only thing i knew about the force awakens and you know what i still went and saw it at two o'clock in the morning after my like future roommate had locked his keys in his car while we were at cookout and the fanfare starts i have no idea what's about to happen i don't know anything i don't know who ray is i had heard the I name kylo i ren. still don't know who ray is i had heard the name kylo ren and i thought kylo ren was the black guy no that's Finn. obviously <laughs> that's finn <laughs> I've now since seen The Force Awakens. <laughs> I was, did you, did you know, little update, 
to our long-term listeners, did you know that Ben Carlin, this is a little breaking news, Ben Carlin has changed his opinion on The Last Jedi. I did. We, we talked about that in a recent episode. Well, he's no longer a fan. I just, my heart was broken and I wanted yeah, I the know. world to know. Well, we still have it on record. He can't make us change that. No, we will not. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I okay. woke up this morning and I saw a like on your tweet from the Bacon and Eggs account that was like, we weren't ready. And I was like, oh. God, <laughs> we got a Captain Marvel trailer while I was slipping. Slip it. I was awake because Seamus texted me on my personal Twitter and he was like, I wasn't ready. I don't think he said that. He wasn't I think that, ready. It, it, that, that makes the continuity of the joke sound a little bit better. I Yeah. And I was so and then I, I watched it because I was like, I'm not going to get out of not watching this one. Like, I can't. No, I think yeah, we, we've, we're in a space now. Right. Yeah. I was where... in I was in a time period in my life where and if it was like, oh, wow, I haven't watched a Star Wars movie in 10 years. I'm going to avoid the trailer. That's like a, a cool thing that I could do back then. And people right. people were like, and I told people that, I'm like, I don't want to see a Force Awakens trailer. Don't show me one. They were like, oh, respect. Respect. I understand what you're doing, and I'm about that. But yeah, it's like, I couldn't afford the Captain Marvel trailer. And it's like, I'm going to see Captain Marvel regardless. That's my thing. Leave me alone. Yeah. I, I mean, don't like, want, yeah. what I don't want to do for the next six months is talk about what probably isn't going to happen in Captain Marvel. Because everything in this trailer is not going to be correct. Well, yeah, they're going to include trailer stuff is, not even in the movie. Yeah, this trailer is entirely a lie. Entirely. Yeah. That's that's the whole thing these days. That's and that's so dumb. I was like, I just want to be like, and I, I just, understand here. It's it's for other people. It is for other people. It is not for me. But for me, I'm like, I just don't care. I just don't. When they landed in the blockbuster, were you like, '90s? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> all right. So this movie's gonna take place in the '90s. Guess who already knew that? Who's got two thumbs and knew that? This guy. This guy. Yeah, which raises very valid questions for me, and this is the only theories I have interested in talking about, is what in God's name was Carol Danvers doing during the last 20 years? More specifically, the Battle of New York and the Battle of Sokovia. And everything else. Where was she for the Avengers Initiative? Where was she for the Sokovia Accords? Where was she for Civil War? Where was she for freaking Infinity War? I think the only one that I think that she should have shown up for, honestly, I mean, she should have shown up for more. But the one that I think is really hard to write her out of is Thor the Dark World. Right. Okay. Because that's like, if she's been like, you know, across the dimensions or whatever, too busy to return. That's the one where all the dimensions line up. Yeah, it is. That's true. <laughs> like, and, and they're going to write it. They're going to write it out with something stupid. Like, oh, she was hunting for infinity stones and didn't find any. Oh, I think she was in the quantum realm. I don't. I think that, that easily ties it together. I don't think they're going to be that clever. No, I hope they are. We'll see. We shall certainly find out. Anyway, it has been 36 minutes of podcast, and we have not talked one single bit about the movie. That's not true. I told you I cried. Right, but now we got to talk about the movie. And I want to talk okay. about this movie. It's not like I'm like, oh, well, Perks be a Wallflower. I don't want to talk about that one. Don't know why we picked this movie. Don't really have much to say. No, it's got plenty to say. Ezra Miller is a mood till I die. He was great. Is this the first thing he was, like, in? I'm fairly certain. This was at least this this was was my the, introduction the breakout. to Ezra Miller. Yeah. Yeah. But Let's it, see. He didn't, it, it, it didn't ring with me when I saw him in... Um, in Grindelwald? Yeah, in, in, uh, in, Fantastic, in Fantastic Beasts, Beasts. where I, I, I wasn't like, oh, that's the kid from... Uh, perks oh i was immediately like that i was the same way with train wreck which i don't think you've seen i've seen train wreck so good man oh that's a good so comedy. so average 85 mm, percent on rotten tomato really good movie amy schumer i've seen amy schumer live that's unfortunate i won't lie to you i really like amy schumer and i really like train wreck and i like a lot of the stuff she does i did not think her live show was very good and i don't watch her like tv show i don't either the, the train wreck for me was one of those movies that it, it just tried way too hard i disagree i thought lebron james was hilarious i yeah i, I did i thought it was funny because of LeBron James and John Cena. John Cena was hilarious. This That was not uh, my favorite Bill Hader role. Uh, but her follow-up movie... Well, not follow-up. There's, there's been a few since then. But I Feel Pretty, what she did this year, was... I didn't like. Anyway, this is not Wallflower. Yeah, Tyler needs to talk about Amy Schumer. Um, she I'm sure she's be. a lovely person in real life. I know that that's a big thing, is to like not be mean to Amy Schumer. So I'm sure she's a lovely person in real life. She's probably much less vulgar to be around. Not vulgar like profane, just vulgar like a human being to be around. But normally, I, I, can, I, I feel like I can gauge based on somebody's comedy, whether or not I would enjoy hanging out with them. And I don't feel like I would enjoy hanging out with Amy Schumer. Oh, I think I would. I think she seems like a pretty chill dude. Well, she's not a dude. Well, oh, that's true. Um, but this movie, I really liked. I, do you feel like clicks are this bad? No, never. Do you feel like it was played up a little too much? I do. I absolutely do. But I think that once again, we are at the root of our high school just wasn't like this. Yeah. I mean, I don't think in our high school. Like, I'll tell you what. More people liked the gay theater kids 
than liked us. Yes. Granted, those kids are like in Tony Award winning shows now. Not just that guy. <laughs> but it's like. Did we know this group in college, in high school? Yeah. I think we, yeah, yeah, we knew them. Yeah, absolutely. We were part of this group when we were freshmen. Yeah, absolutely. Like we 100%. had those senior friends. I can, I can think exactly who they are that we were friends with who were seniors who sort of showed us the ropes. And they were kind of this like weird, they were all in band, but they were this like weird mod podge group of senior girls that. It's, it's really, learned. it's like, it's, it's Rocky Horror Picture Show that ties all this together. Tell me more. Because those are absolutely, th- th- that is a real life thing that happens. To this day, people still do the, the Rocky Horror thing. Not my thing, personally, but like everybody knows somebody that does the Rocky Horror thing. Yeah, and does it And big. those people are the ultimate dimensional bridge across teen movies. Those yes. are the people that ground things and make them real. Yes. Because you know exactly who those kids are. Because as soon as in this movie they start doing the Rocky Horror thing, I'm like, I queued up like 45 memories of people from high school. Where like, I'm like, I you may have exactly not, you who. may have not done the Rocky Horror thing, but like, I definitely thought you did. Right. And I can, I, I can, I can name about. specific names. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, we absolutely knew this. And this and this group existed. It, and yeah, they were super tight and they probably did go out and get drunk all the time and have wild parties. And we just didn't know about it. Yeah, we were not part of it. <laughs> right. It's like none of us were the Charlie in this situation because people in their grade levels kind of stuck together a little bit. And it wasn't like, you, know, you and I had each other and, and other friends, obviously, we weren't stuck out on the edge like, well, we got to make friends with just the seniors. Right. But I do think that our freshman year, we had a much stronger relationship with the seniors than we did as seniors with the freshmen when we were seniors. Yeah. Does that make sense? I, I, yeah, I agree with that 100%. Like, I don't I don't think I made a friend with a single freshman when I was a senior. Not be, Well, probably because I was had this crazy superiority complex. But I think it was just natural that because I was friends with senior when I was a freshman, that by the time I got to senior year, that and there, was, there really was just and and this is part of the whole thing when people talk about the '90s being the nostalgia generation, like the '90s babies, and what they really mean is like kids that were like alive and cognizant for the '90s, right? And we're on the very end of that. There, so there really is between us and the freshmen that were freshmen when we were seniors. There really is almost a generational difference that is not yeah, not perceptible over the age, but is perceptible in the meantime. It's like we had a lot more in common with the seniors when we were freshmen than the freshmen did when we were seniors. And I think if you ask the freshmen that were freshmen when we were seniors, and you ask the seniors that were seniors when we were freshmen, they would tell you the same thing. Is it like yeah. they got along better. Like they, the, the seniors that we interacted with saw the relationship the same way we did. Maybe not the same way, but similarly. I also it wasn't just like we... we were sitting there going, "Oh wow, all these seniors like us," and they were like, "Wow, screw these kids." Right. I know that we went to live show. There was like a weird list of things we could do as a group with the seniors when we were freshmen that I don't think we gave to the freshmen when we were seniors. Like we went to like commonplace Der- shows. Yeah, like Derek Barnes was in a band that played shows that like we would all just go. Every- see. Yeah, everybody went to see. Derek Derek's band and and Santiago's band. And it was just like, we didn't know if they were good or not, but we knew that if we went, then like Santi would be there and Maddie Springer would be there and all the people we wanted to hang out with. Megan Glassman and Samantha Garden. No, Santiago Prada. Oh, I meant Santi. Oh, when I was talking about Santi, I was talking about Santiago Prada. Oh. Who had a band that played with Commonplace? Yeah, and like and we would go, Patrick yeah, would and we there. would go to the and we'd go to the water heater, yeah, which is a and, just an empty room with sunflowers painted on the side. Yeah, and they would they would play music, and everybody would be there. And then afterwards, we would like drive around and go to the park or whatever, like exactly what they do in this movie. Yeah, yeah, I was astonished watching this movie, like how much of it sounded familiar. Yeah, it's like oh, and then they went to the park, and then I was like, but we we did that, and but. no, and there's a lot of things in this movie that if this was a different movie. Like, if it was based on a John Green novel, or if it was something like that, that I would write it off as, like, oh, Hollywood did that. Because some of the stuff that they are hipsters about is just way too mainstream. Yes. Like, absolutely, the fact that these kids don't know who David Bowie is, is, like, you're you're yeah. you're really reaching on that one. Yeah, like, these kids would know Bowie songs. It's like, maybe you don't know which Bowie song, but like you can hear David Bowie and be like, that's David Bowie. Right. <laughs> But these kids, and first of all, I kept forgetting what time period this took place in because I'm like, it was not uncommon for kids like our age to drive trucks that looked like that in high school. Like from right. like I drove a car from the '90s in high school, so that wasn't weird to me. And they were they were talking about like the radio, and you know, they don't know what songs coming on the radio. I'm like, Shazam it! What is wrong right. with you people? Pull out your iPhone. <laughs> that was my first instinct. Was like, oh, you don't know what songs on the radio? Just pull out Shazam. Yeah. What is wrong? Why are you not doing that? Like, it's really simple. It's gonna tell you it's Heroes by David Bowie. Yeah, you can actually just ask Siri. You can be like, hey Siri, what song is this? And she'll tell you. I've never done that. She will. Because I still, I still have issues with Siri. <laughs> to this day, I have, I am, I am I, like, and this is how you know that I'm not like a Gen Zer, that not the like born with an iPhone in my mouth generation. Is I can't get Siri to work. Siri never. It, it'd be like, I'd be like, hey Siri, do something for me. And then five minutes later, she's like, here's what I found on the web for. Do something for me. <laughs> 
I, me and Siri have a very strong relationship. She knows exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, I've just never really because I, I, I've get, what I do is I get frustrated with Siri, figure out how to do it on my own, and then do it that way every other time. So it's like I never, I hardly ever ask Siri things, so she doesn't get to know me. And that's my own fault. And that's me being, I guess, like an older person in this generation. Again, the iPhone. You curmudgeon. The iPhone born in my mouth generation. The iPhone was not born in my mouth. I had a, I mean, I had a, I remember a time when there was no Game Boy Color. Right. That is why we are the nostalgia generation. Right. We, the early, like, because we witnessed the, the, the technological eruption from the exact time when we were, like, poised to witness it. Okay, who was the, do you, this is a, just a quick aside. Do you remember the t- first time you saw an iPhone? Yeah, Philip Anderson had one in uh, the locker room after gym class one day. I remember before that. I remember, what was his last name? He was on the basketball team. His name was Justin. I have no idea. I know who you're talking about, though. And he hung out with Scott Harriman. Yeah. One of those two, I don't know which, but I was in the auditorium, and one of those two pulled the iPhone iPhone 1 out of their pocket and they had the you remember when they came with the cloth yeah to clean it yeah they had the cloth over it as they pulled it out of their pocket and they like wiped it clean and then pulled it out and did something with it and I was like oh my god that's an iPhone yeah I remember I remember Philip Anderson had one he pulled it out of his pocket in gym class one day was just like guys I got an iPhone Roanoke didn't even have 2g service (laughs) then yeah it wasn't like an option (laughs) like It's like your your you iPhone was a... connecting to dial up. Right. <laughs> 5G was just announced. Are you ready? No, not yet. I don't have my iPhone XS. Say la vie, mon ami. Uh, the perks of being a wildflower. They would get the Ziggy Stardust thing. The Ziggy Stardust thing. Yeah, he's Bowie, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they would I don't think they would know him for Ziggy Stardust. <laughs> Ziggy played guitar. I think you know Ziggy Stardust because of Guitar Hero. You d- Right, I do. Which did not come out in the 90s. But, like, Uh, these kids would know who... Because I guarantee you, this group of people in the 90s avoided listening to Queen. I was talking about this yesterday. You were like, at least it wasn't Killer Queen or something. And I'm like, yeah, these kids would purposely not listen to Queen. Yeah, these kids are... But they would know, because of that, they would know Under Pressure. They would know... Vanilla Ice would have been a thing by this point. They would know Under Pressure. They know who David Bowie is. They definitely know who David Bowie is. And she's like, what is this song? This is the tunnel song. And I'm like, this? This is the tunnel song? This song. This one. Do you... do you have a tunnel song? Oh, I have a lot of tunnel songs. And like, and there, there, there are plenty of songs that that if you were like, hey, but I, mean, I don't, I don't guess I have it. See, the, the, the tunnel thing, like, that's not, that's not like a thing for me. It's or like you if need, you were, you feel the need to, if you were like, yo, get in the back of this truck and listen to Wild Wild Love by Pitbull in a tunnel, <laughs> I'd be like, sounds like a rad time. <laughs> sounds like fun. I'd be standing Let's up and it. just jamming, like knocking my head against the lights. <laughs> So like it's not it would not be uh, granted I would I would probably not do that it sounds like a terrible idea and after this movie came out in Pittsburgh they were like please don't do that please 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 do not um, please especially since I watch I watch Speed and that's how the villain gets his head cut off but. Um, yeah, it's like, there's, I definitely understand what she's talking about with the tunnel song. And it's not like the tunnel song has to fall into like Tom Haverford's bangers category, but it's like the tunnel song has to at least get you hype. You think it has to get you hype? It might not. It's not like, I'm not saying like pregame football warm up song, but I'm saying like, if you're going to give me a Bowie song, at least give me a Bowie song I can jam to. Something I can dance. Like, like, like I said, like modern love, man. I don't know enough Bowie songs. To be able to identify, Go, listen to listen to "Modern Love" by David Bowie, and tell me you you don't want to you don't want to boogie, you don't want to move you your feet. <laughs> I think my tunnel song. I I don't know. I feel like my tunnel song would think, be like "Separate Ways" by Journey. Oh, I was thinking like "Vox Populi" by Thirty Seconds to Mars. That's what I'm talking about. Though, it's a hype song, man. Yeah, a song that like gets it gets your blood rushing. For whatever reason, it can be whatever you want. If if that song is like you know, a punk by Vampire Weekend, that dude's gonna win a tone. Uh, he got who? He's well on his way. The guy from Vampire Weekend? No, the guy from Thirty Seconds to Mars. Oh, oh, Jared, Jared Leto. Leto. I, He's got a Grammy, do right? They? I don't know. That band should. They're good. Hey, the Tony's at, gonna be the challenge at, for him. At Cool Story Cows. So they have a Grammy. I wonder if she even knows. They does not look like they have a Grammy. Ooh, gonna have to put out a banger. Yeah, they do not have a Grammy. I don't think. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. He has he has the Oscar already. Yeah, he got though, the Oscar he? for Dallas Buyers Club, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And he could I mean not, sure he could get a Tony. Like he can sing and act. But it, can he dance? I don't know if he has to dance. I think if you made a, a musical out of Dallas Buyers Club, they'd be like, okay. Yeah, like you could put like, yeah, you could I'm put in. Jared Leto in Kinky Boots. Yeah, you could. But would that win a Tony? No, but like a role like that. Could he be uh Oh, what's the name of the rock star? Who? Rock of Ages. Oh, I have 
no idea. Oh, what is his name? Tom Cruise's character. I don't know, but it's hard to win a Tony for something that's already been done. I know. Like, I on, know, a, on I know, a re... I, I mean, it, yeah, it, it happens, but... Oh, I'm gonna have to figure this out. Oh, it's gonna eat me up inside if I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen that movie. Well, it's a, it's a show. Well, I definitely haven't seen the well. show. <laughs> Dude, if I have not seen the movie based on it, you can get bet I haven't seen the show. What on earth? I have seen far more movie, movie musicals than live musicals. <laughs> Stacy Jacks. Oh, I did know that. Somewhere deep Stacey down in the recesses Jacks. of my mind. What a hair metal was, name. I know, it's two X's. Oh, Stacy Jacks. Oh, I could be Stacy Jacks. Stacy Jacks has had a heart attack. You're just saying Stacy's mom? Yeah, like John and Hank have got yeah. a purple tank. <laughs> um, oh. but yeah, so the, the Tunnel song, I feel like, like that's that, that. I said all that to say this. I, this is one of the things I, I have an issue with in this movie is the music. Is like, Heroes by David Bowie is a really lame Tunnel song. And, and the whole rest of the movie, she's like, I can't find the Tunnel song. I haven't been able to find it. I've been looking. And I'm just like, again, how do you not just go down to the record? store even and be like give me all of the david bowie you have right and i will find it yeah it can't it can't be that hard hang on what album is it even on and it is not a a, a david bowie song i knew off the top of my head oh, no, it's on I the album here it's the title track of the album heroes from 1977 so that was already out then yeah all of david bowie's music <laughs> was out then <laughs> Believe it or not. What did you think of Emma Watson's American accent? It was worse than Benedict Cumberbatch in Doctor Strange. I almost felt like she kept they slipping out of it. Like, with, yeah, I felt like they could have gotten away with being like, oh, and that's Sam. She's from England. I would have been like, okay. Or they could have just cool. used anybody else. And it, well, she was Hermione Granger and she agreed movies. So. I mean, I agree with that, but like, you yeah. didn't need Emma Watson. This movie no. would have been fine without Emma Watson. This girl isn't even particularly like a manic pixie dream girl. Like, she kind of sucks. Yeah, she dates all the wrong people. Yeah, and she like... And then she's getting mad at Charlie. She's like, why didn't you ask me out? And it's like, because you had New a Year's boyfriend. Eve, you had a boyfriend. You showed up to the party with some new guy. Right, it's like, what, what I did like... What I did like about this movie compared to most... Also, also, I'll say it. Charlie probably has a problem with women over 18 since he's 14 and he's had some problems with that in the past. I didn't seem to bother him. I think he definitely wanted to ask her out. <laughs> but... That's probably not that funny. Um, but. Oh, yeah, you derailed my thought. Dang it. Uh, what I did like about this movie is that she isn't a Manny Pixie Dream Girl to the extent that she's not, like, perfect. She doesn't even appear to be perfect. It's like, she's dumb. She's also very clearly, like, the prettiest girl in that group. And Yeah, definitely, but, like, she... she like can't do well enough on her SAT to get into Penn State. Which is not saying Penn State's like a dumb school or it's like super easy to get into, but it's not like it, it, they they wrote that problem in there for her. Because right. like Margot Ross didn't, Spiegelman didn't have a problem with school. It's true. Margot Ross Spiegelman. She has to <sighs> she ends up sucking because she sucks. It's not like she sucks because she can't get into Penn State. It's like she was going to Duke. She could do whatever she wanted. She was going to Duke? Or no, he was going to Duke. Quentin was going to Duke. She was going somewhere like it, it was it was written off as not being Margot's school was not an issue. It was a non event. Right. But, like, Sam had school problems. Sam, I think, like, here's one thing I didn't like is, I'm, and maybe I'm changing the subject too much, and you can let me know if we need to bring it back. But here's one thing I didn't like is Paul Rudd, like, at the end of the movie, Charlie's like, you're, like, the best teacher I've ever had. But they only had, like, a few interactions in the whole movie. Like, it wasn't like he figured everything out because of Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd said that, like, we accept the love He definitely we figured thing. everything out because of Paul Rudd. It's like Paul Rudd was giving him a new book every week is what it seemed like. Yeah, which was cool. Right, and he, like, gave him his own copy of some book that he felt was very important. I'm glad they didn't like, this isn't, they weren't like, this is my copy of Catcher in the Rye. This is a really important book. What was the more obscure book that he, she, that he gives him that his girlfriend is like, oh, I read this in seventh grade and it sucks. Walden. What is Walden? Can you tell me about Walden? No, I, I have not read it. Walden. It's one of those like, we're going to bay in an eggs book club. It's, it's, Henry David Thoreau. It's like one of those super important books. Is that like a normal English class book or is it like not? That is not a book you read in seventh grade. No, that girl was faux intellectual. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. She spends her time sitting in circles with her friends pontificating to one another, forever competing for that one moment of self-aggrandizing glory in which she hogs the intellectual spotlight, holding dominion over the entire shallow, pointless conversation. Oh, we're not worthy. Correct. Yeah. Everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's who that song is talking to. <laughs> she subscribes to a panel of hipster judges. <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs down, incoming and outgoing trends and styles of music and art. She needs to go analog. She's so postmodern. Uh, that being said, uh, I, I don't like... Postmodern is one of those words that, like, the hipsters have uh, kind of ruined. Expand on postmodernism and why you think... It's, well, it's just... it's like It needs to make a return to the mainstream. No, but it's just... It's something that you, you say that word and you immediately sound like a jack...
You are a jack. But like Scott Bradley's Postmodern Jukebox is a cool band. And I don't I think th you need to apologize for liking them just because it has the word postmodern in it. But also it's just a it's just a literary movement. They all are. And all it means is that it's stuff that came after the, the modernist literary movement. I'm trying to figure out. All right, like, postmodernism that's, that's is generally the problem. defined by an attitude of skepticism, irony, or rejection toward the meta narratives and ideologies of modernism. But that's the problem with like art and talking about art and literature and all that stuff is that like modernism was a time and it's over. Yes, yeah. But like we talk about modern technology as being the newest up to date thing. But like with, with, with all the other stuff, it's like modernism is, is gone. It is a day that has passed. Well, I think currently we are in post post modernism. Yeah. And once you start getting too many posts, it starts and you talk in, in music, people talk about like, Oh, I only listen to post rock. What does that even mean? <laughs> uh, it's name me a post rock band. I've heard of post Malone. <laughs> no, <laughs> It's 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 not bands you've heard of is the thing. It's I mean it might be I, I might be incorrect. <laughs> so like explosions in the sky is is a post rock. Never band. heard of that in mind. They life. play like instrumental music. Sigaros is a post rock band. It's like okay, if you say so. It's like Death Cab for Cutie for people that don't like Death Cab for Cutie because they're too maintain mainstream. Oh my gosh, I hate hipsters. <laughs> I don't hate hipsters. If you listen to this show, you're probably pretty hipster because we're not super famous. But, um... <laughs> we love you, listeners. But, the, and they do this constantly with the the music in this movie is that, like, Charlie gives her the mixtape and it's just, like, it's full of the Smiths, which is just the most hipster band except for maybe, like, Joy Division to be into. Tame Impala, Ethan. Tame Impala, I believe, is post-rock. <laughs> I've heard of I don't Tame know Impala. If, I don't know if I'd call them... I don't know if you'd call them post-rock or not. I don't know what you'd call Tame Impala. But, like, Tame Impala is... is is at least relevant. They still make music. Yes. Like, all, the only people who listen to the Smiths are people that complain about the fact that the Smiths aren't a did band you notice, anymore. Did you notice a little nod to those of us in the, in the know, in the loop? About the shags? <laughs> about the shags, which is like, this is some great music, and but, it's got the shags on the it. The shags, for those of you who aren't in the know, are a band uh, described by Frank Zappa as being better than the Beatles ever and, and are legitimately unlistenable now here's the truth about there's a little bit deeper to that frank zappa conversation is i'm sure there his, is it's frank zappa no his his argument was that when record executives were old curmudgeons that just let anything get recorded and put out it was better than when record labels were run by like people who only wanted to make music that would sell yeah and i 100 percent agree with him on that yeah and that it's like I still agree with him on that. I like popular music because I'm real. I'm a real person. I'm a real boy. Right, because pop popular music's good. Right, <laughs> it's good for a reason. And there's a lot of Speaking popular of music I don't like and a lot of it that I do, but I also, like, most of my favorite albums aren't considered pop. Do you have a favorite pop song right now? Because I do. By, like, a long shot. It's popular right now? Popular right now. Uh, I recently downloaded it to my Spotify collection. I and I don't. I listen to it on. probably every day. I don't know what's... The thing is, is, like, I, I listen to some of the, um, like, this the is Discover a song podcast. Is, playlist and the and the stuff like that and find music that way. So I don't really know what and this is this is me sounding like a real jerk, but like I don't necessarily know what is popular or not. This is definitely a pop. So the song that I have been obsessed with is Young Blood by Five Seconds of Summer. Oh, that is a banger. And it is definitely We're, we a pop as the song. world do not deserve Five Sauce. <laughs> we so good. we gave them so much crap. <laughs> and then they put out this track. It does have. There's one moment in the song where I'm like. This was produced by a pop band, by like a pop producer. But the rest it's of the song. It's actually not. It's John Feldman. It's not. Uh, from Goldfinger. There's one like moment. Like it's the, the singer from Goldfinger. I'm pretty sure he really? did the, the new Five Sauce. He did the old Five Sauce. He did new Blink-182. Well, there's one moment in the song where it's got like a real poppy sound to it. And I'm like, oh, man. I don't think they even wanted him this. But the rest of the song is so good. But yeah, do you have like a favorite pop song? I'm looking. I'm looking because I'm not sure. It's not in my feelings. You don't like that song? No, it's not. I also like the new, I don't know, it's not new anymore, but the Cardi B song. I, I do not like Cardi B. Really? Yeah, not a, not a big thing. Oh, oh, this is it. Uh, it's that, um, this is number nine on the US top 50 right now. It's East Side uh, by Benny Blanco featuring Halsey and Khaled. Never heard of that. It's a target. bop. I also like the song. This is the only song I think on my I also really phone. like Post Malone. I do. That is. I do really like Post Malone. Yeah, I like Post Malone. The rock star song, it's a banger. That's a banger. He's got a lot of bangers. Uh, Better Now is a banger. That is 16 on the charts right now on Spotify. There's one song I really like. I think this is the only song on my entire phone that I feel like. Oh, yo, 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 yo. That new Eminem album was fire too. I didn't listen to a single track. Me and Eminem have this thing. Also, apparently I there's new Kanye West Occasionally song. experience. Occasionally I get to experience Eminem. Well, I mean, this my favorite popular music, I think, probably is going to change next week when Kanye West releases Yandi. What a ridiculous which name is for an his, album. Well, he did Yeezus, so now he's doing Yandi, but... Ya Gandhi is not the same as Jesus. I mean, it is the Kanye West. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, so Kanye's got a new, a full new album coming out, and generally, anytime Kanye puts out a new album, I'm like, this is revolutionary. This is good. Yeah, I quite like Kanye West. Kanye, I miss the old Kanye. Straight from the mold, Kanye. Yeah, that whole song, pretty much. Yeah. I do like Post Malone. I do like the new Eminem. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I have no idea what's popular or not. Well, let's, let's. I know that on that list in the top ten, there was an artist called Marshmallow who is EDM, and I guess if we're putting like actual EDM in the top forty now, I really don't know because that's like that's he's he's like actual EDM, like just plays at festivals and isn't right. like Calvin Harris. Right. Well, let's let's pass some hash browns real quick. Oh God. Um. Since we're talking about recommendations oh, Lord. and one. Lord Jesus, what? I don't know. Should I make you listen to an entire Tame Impala album? No, God no. I have some hash browns. I for actually you. don't like Tame Impala. <laughs> I'm sorry. All I know is I'm sorry, Sam Atkinson. If you're listening to yeah, this, Sam is the only person I know that likes Tame Impala. I'm sure other people I know do, but he's the only person with a Twitter handle about Tame Impala. I don't know. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's talk about last week's. Okay. Um, what did you think of so Independence Day? Independence Day was about as American as something can get. And I'm really excited to write a blog about it, but I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want to do it and from what angle I want to talk about. Like I said earlier in the show, I've never wanted to smoke a cigar more in my entire life. You want to talk about an excellent ad from the tobacco industry, Independence Day. The to movie. me, Independence it, Day it's a, has everything you need to make a great action movie. Because like it's got great action, it's got great actors like stuck into weird situations, it's got quippy one-liners, and it's got an awesome speech. It's got all of those things. I felt like, and maybe this is me just approaching it from the wrong angle, but I watched it a week after 9-11, um, and I was I, I felt a certain feeling of like, you could only make this movie before 9-11, where you just level American cities. Yeah, that's accurate. Um, but like you also leveled have, all uh, other kinds of cities. Right, but you only showed on camera the leveling of American cities. Well, that's not true. For the most part, wasn't it? No. It, like, they go down the, like, Empire State Building or whatever, and Yeah, there's, like, they LA and D.C. And New York. Yeah, and there's a bunch of other cities all over the place. Right, but they only show, like, the laser hitting. No, that's not true. I don't know. Maybe I missed it. But I thought it was really, really good. I, uh, I was surprised by how much I liked it. I did think pretty much the entire time about Spaceballs. I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. I wouldn't say that's the best correlation to Spaceballs. Well, just because of, uh, what's his name? Bill. Oh, Bill Pullman? Bill Pullman. Yeah, who plays Lone Star. <laughs> yeah, I also thought about Rogue One when they blow up Jakku. Or not Jakku, um whatever that city is where they like that star the small city oh yeah I was like, yeah that's very similar yeah. but obviously that's one taking from the other it wasn't like independence day wasn't like what if we did this obscure star wars thing yeah uh, it's like it's a big laser there's only really so many ways you can show a big laser destroying a city yeah i did i didn't know how i felt about them actually showing the aliens on screen i thought there might have been some value to it if they like never showed them if they but... were just like a drone species yeah i could see that although i think that that's what ruined Armada by Ernest Klein. So I, don't know, I haven't read Armada. I listened to, like the first few chapters, and then I was like, oh, "The it does suck. <laughs> the enemy <laughs> isn't real." They are all drones. Ah, I don't mind if they were real. I just think that like when you get into making all those prosthetics and everything for like an imaginary thing, it's sometimes lost on me. Interesting. So you'd just rather there never be aliens. No, like the Predator's cool. The Predator looks cool and is cool. You talking about the new one? I'm talking about every iteration of Predator there's ever been has looked cool. I would I would take Alien over Predator. No, in terms of looks? Yeah, like Alien, alien from Aliens? Yeah, no, I would take Predator every time. I like the aliens in this movie. They kind of look like Predator. No, they don't. They look like the aliens. Yeah, but they didn't look like E.T. No, they didn't. That is what's cool about yeah. uh, War of the Worlds is that they it's just like ships. Yeah, yeah. It works in War of the Worlds. That's a good movie. It's like three hours long. I was talking about the original one. Oh. I don't know that I've actually seen the Tom Cruise one. It's pretty good. I liked it. If people didn't like it, they can... I mean, I believe that it's know. good. It just I, I just missed it. Oh, that's pretty good. It's not, sometimes it's on TV. It takes like six hours to watch on TV. Is it really that long? It's a pretty long film. Um... But I guess you, you have the disadvantage of seeing Independence Day after, like, that whole crop of disaster movies that we had for a while. I mean, I think it's kind of cheapened. It's pretty good. That have cheapened movies like Armageddon and Independence Day. I was wrong. War of the Worlds from 2005 is only two hours long. I don't know. I don't know why I, I thought it was so long. Like, I think The Day After Tomorrow did a lot of work against disaster movies. Day After Tomorrow is a great film. It is, but now everybody, that's what everybody, like, compares everything to. Everything that has any oh. sort of destruction. People are like, well, it's just what like I The Day After Tomorrow. Like, no, it's not. Yeah, but I, I felt like it was it was really good. I really enjoyed it. And I also felt like it wrapped everything up really well. Like, you couldn't make that movie today for a variety of reasons, but you would have to set it up for a sequel. And I know that there was the sequel, like the resurgence thing. Yeah. But if that never happened, it would have been fine. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, I mean, it was, the sequel was, the sequel was disconnected enough that it really didn't matter. That I forgot you said it until you said, or forgot it existed until you said sequel. Well, I just, I was watching the movie and I was like, most of these actors are still prolific enough that they could have made a well, sequel so like, and they did. Will Smith isn't in it. What? Yeah. 
So Will Smith is not in it, and they give him like an off-screen death. That's it's stupid. like Hiller died in a training accident. What? Yeah, that's the usual bullshit. Yeah, so it's like immediately you're starting on the wrong foot right there. It's like if Will Smith or Jeff Goldblum says no, you just don't make the movie. Right. You just straight it's up like, you say, you say the... okay, fine, cool. You you had the power here. You win. Yeah. You're you don't invest in Bill Pullman. He's not the reason the movie's so good. Well, it was it was about Jeff Goldblum. Oh, okay. And Bill Pullman was a big reason the movie's so good. That speech, man. That speech is really good, but Bill Pullman's not the reason movies are good in twenty sixteen. No, that's absolutely true. But like <laughs> he was a big re- and and him being the you know, the dad. I've never seen the sequel. No, it? he's a dad in this movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To the to the little yeah, girl, yeah, yeah they're like, all like all dads. The wife dies. Yeah, yeah. It's like that's a, that's a big of, part of why that movie like because there was some pulls at the strings over yeah. her stomach. Whatever, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, um, so I watched I watched White Gold. Yeah, what'd you think? Oh my god, uh, were you dying <laughs> from from the moment it started? It's like I was not even because it's it's uh, set up. I know it's not a Netflix show. Before any of the Brits get mad at me, it's a it's a Channel Four show on the BBC, but it is set up in America as a Netflix show. So therefore, there's no like lollygagging around. It's like the show starts. Yeah. It's like, it is instant. I wasn't even... Frank Underwood kills a dog in the I wasn't scene. even in my chair yet, and I was just, like, falling on the floor laughing. Yeah. This is... Okay, it's so, so let good. Me, warning. Caveat for adventurers. This is not a show to show that your children... <laughs> or anybody really under the age of, like, four. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, I hate what's his name? Ed Westwick, Chuck Bass. Really? Yeah, it's just it, I love. Oh God! Him. I, well, no, I, that's what I'm saying. Is like I just I absolutely despise his character. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like you didn't like the actor. No, no, he's perfect. Like, but I feel like he's perfect because he sucks. Yeah. But it's yeah, so he like he is the greatest human on this earth. This is sales in its purest, in its purest form. form. And I did not get this. I did not understand the double glazing thing because it is referenced heavily in Good Omens by Neil Gaiman as like double glazing salesmen are the worst people. Like, yeah. they talk about it in the book and i'm just like i don't i don't know what those words mean because here in america we don't have buildings that old and we build things better right. as far as like houses go so like double glazing windows I, I don't really know what that means but it's like we just use decent windows when we build the houses and i get the whole problem was that there were all these council estate houses that were built with <laughs> windows <laughs> And, I, and that, that whole part went over my head, and I was like, okay, cool, British history mumbo-jumbo, awesome, <laughs> great. You have you have houses that were built by the government that aren't good. Yeah. We have the same problem, but they have windows that work. Right. They just might fall down occasionally. But no, it is absolutely hysterical. Um, It made it made a lot of things make a lot more sense to me. Like, I feel like I understand Rose and Jackie Tyler better now from Doctor Who. Because <laughs> every time every time his wife talks, I'm just like, that's Jackie Tyler, but young. It's a good show. It's, his, it's really... absolutely hysterical. I've, I've not finished it yet. I've gotten through four out of six episodes. I'm going to watch the other two before I write the blog. But thank you for the recommendation. It's absolutely hysterical. It's right on brand with me. You nailed that one. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd like it. I was like, if I can just get him to watch it. Absolutely hysterical. And world. it was one of those things where, like, if you try to explain it to somebody, it's like, well, I'm watching this comedy about window salesmen in Essex <laughs> in the 80s. I'm like, <laughs> right. good for you, man. That's really, that's a cool <laughs> thing you're doing there. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like once you get in the house you don't leave <laughs> he's like praying with them for three right. hours and then pisses himself right. <laughs> you don't leave you got and it's, and it is it is for a certain type of american at least it might be hilarious for all british people it's for a certain type of american primarily somebody that has worked in sales oh yeah it definitely like this was probably my peak sales time when i discovered this show and there there are definitely gonna be people out there americans and british people alike who hear everything that they say on that show and are like right how as it should be <laughs> oh you never you never let them out of your sight you go into the house with them and like absolutely that's how you do it and that those are the moments where i know that i'm not i'm not cut out to be mr sales guy M- mr sales mr do it all the time mr anderson um yeah i'm glad you like it i also licked, listened to what was the name of the album you sent oh, me it was walkabout uh walkabout by, and had by the keep flying yeah. alone. i really enjoyed it um i don't know that it i think you oversold it when you said it was a ska album well, I was horns. expecting a ska album. There was there's some horns occasionally. Maybe when you perform yeah, with them, it's, you it's play a lot, with these like, guys, right? If you get a chance to stay, they come to Roanoke pretty often. Um, and I'll, I'll take you next time they're in town because I usually play like Fork in the Market for five bucks. Nice. But it, it is it is a lot of horns live. Okay. Well, on the album, I was like, I mean, horns. I mean, it's, okay. it's I know ska is not the right word, but it's like what I don't know if there's a better word. I, punk with horns. Yeah, but that's not a thing. Like. Uh, Ah, oh, you and your postmodernists and your genre names. I enjoyed the album. I didn't really understand any of the words, um, just because of the nature of the type of music that it was. So I was only like sort of able to follow along with what was going on. Um, but I did enjoy it, and I liked all the like found music that they cut into it with the like 
quotes from Lost. Yeah, and it was, I mean, it was it's, it had Lost references. I was like, this is a thing with horns and and Joel the music and Lost references. I was like, how can I go wrong here? So it was just right. something I, I wanted to share with you. It was something I was like, hey, you should listen to this back a while back, and then you didn't do it. So I was like, you know what? I have a captive audience here. Um, they are good. They <laughs> well, are good friends of mine. They're really good people, and you guys should listen to Keep Flying. Yeah. Uh, I will not be blogging about that. I will be blogging yeah, that's fine. Independence Day. Those blogs are both posted for all patrons as of yesterday on our uh, patreon.com slash bacon and eggs. Those will go public for everybody a week from yesterday, um, and you'll be able to read all of our blog posts on Patreon, and it should be on our website as well, but we got to work some kinks out, but it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Just, we just got to figure out what to do. <laughs> right, she has got to post We, them. at this, t- by the time you're hearing this, we will have figured that out, but right. at this moment, we have not. Right, but they will not be, the, the, every blog post we do is Patreon only for a week. Is, right, and then the, the following week, they will yeah, go live on, on Patreon website. and the website. And on bacon and, bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs. Media. Which is, what a good website name, you know? I'd go to that website. Bacon and eggs. Media. Yeah. Fair enough, I would too. Okay, do you have a hash brown to pass to me? Yeah, I, uh, I thought about this a little bit, and I'm going to make you watch another pilot. Okay. Um, um, because this is like our only chance to talk about TV shows. It's true. And I've watched a lot of TV lately. Um, I'm not asking you to watch anything that I think you're going to hate, but we talked about it on Twitter yesterday and you were like, I've never heard of that, but go nuts. Um, uh, but you need to watch the pilot for atypical. Okay. I can do that. Um, it, wow. It is the first thing that comes up. And ironically enough, the second thing that comes up is the thing that I was going to recommend to you, which is the first episode of Ozark. Ozark. With Jason Bateman. I've heard of that. I started watching it. Yeah. I watched the first couple episodes. It is very good. I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. I believe that it is very yeah, good. It's it's dark but interesting and still kind of funny. Cool. That's really weird though. I pulled up Netflix to make sure I was like, I'm not crazy. This is on Netflix. I did watch this on Netflix, not like HBO stream. And yeah, a- we'll Atypical and <laughs> and Ozark were the first things to come up. Crazy. You have Netflix just ready to go on your computer. I just went to Netflix.com. Ah. Um, Spider Man Three's on Netflix. Bruce Almighty's on Netflix. Spider Man Three, classic. Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock. God. <laughs> I'm still, I still don't think Venom's going to be that bad. I'm certain it will be a train wreck. I'm probably. I, 20, I will, I will make a bet with you right now that it does not break 30% on Rotten Tomatoes critic score. I don't have betting money. <laughs> what can we do? How can we make this bet? Okay, we can, we can, we can bet a punishment. Ooh, I just did one. Right. When does Venom come out? I don't know. Soon-ish, right? Yeah. October 5th. October 5th. Yeah, we can do that. 10, we can, yeah, we can, we can, we can do that. We'll bet a punishment. Hmm. Okay, I'm in. Okay, cool. You, you said 30%. 35. I'll give it 35. 35. Okay. Uh, by the time that we would, by the, by recording the week after. Yes. Not that we're going to do Venom. We're not? I don't think so. Oh, no, that's the week we're doing Justice League. Is it? Or we don't have it in the cards to do Venom. Why not? Not in the cards. Well, in the, which is not in the calendar. Oh, well, if people want to hear us talk we Venom, can talk, we can do that. We talk about <laughs> Venom tomorrow, but I, I, I don't think it's going to be good enough. To, tomorrow? Yeah, we could, we're going to meet up tomorrow and do some work and we can oh, talk about right. whether or not we want to do Venom. This is an aside, ladies and gentlemen. Ah. It's a Shakespeare thing. Sometimes... <laughs> The person talks to the audience. It's called an aside. This is happening between you and me. Tyler doesn't know about this. I did that on the show not too long ago. Last week. I just remembered that. That's hilarious. I'm so funny. All right. So we'll bet we'll bet a punishment on Venmo. Not Venmo. Venom. Venom. Same letters. It is the same letters. In case you guys were wondering, you can go in our Facebook group right now. Bacon and Eggs fans on Facebook. And you can see a punishment video. I'll go ahead and pin it. But you can see a punishment video of Tyler singing the first verse and chorus of Hooked on a Feeling by Blue Swede. Because he didn't do the hash brown. But I did. You did now. now. What was that? You just a fly. There's a fly in my room. Oh, it looked like you were like, <laughs> you didn't, Ooh, hello, yeah, boy. Hello. <laughs> All right. Hello, good boy. So we should probably talk some more about this movie. Did Okay, so there was something I was thinking earlier about this movie that I was like, man, they really, really missed the mark on this. It was uh, the shags. Kid, You're right. The kid does a lot of drugs. Um, yeah, he does. I didn't quite realize that as a youth. Yeah, they do a lot of drugs. The whole thing with the acid went completely over my head the first time I saw this. Yeah, I didn't realize that's what he was doing. I thought he was just depressed because his girl had a new girl boyfriend. Yeah, well, I don't know. So this is, I don't even know what to say about that. This is one of those movies that I have made grander in my memory than it is in real life. So you do not like this? No, I do like this. It is a very good, it's a very important movie, but it also, it does have its problems and it has its things I take issue with that I had just forgotten about entirely. Like what, Ethan? Like the fact that, like I forgot about the whole, like, oh, Sam is a like terrible person that leads this kid on while she's got a boyfriend and then comes back at the end and it's just like, why didn't you ever ask me out? You know, you 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 should make me cheat on my boyfriend or whatever. And she clearly had feelings for him and just continues this relationship this farcical thing that they've got um as well as everything about the drugs as well as they are super hipster and super annoying about their music and pretty much everything else and i hate people that listen to the smiths 
for like fun. It's not fun. No one likes the Smiths. They weren't that good. Meat is Murder is a weird album for people that aren't vegans to listen to. They're it, like they're they're just another band. And I get it. Like I am I am definitely one to over accentuate the impact of music in my life. But like they are a band that you didn't grow up with. That like you chose because it was hipster popular. Yeah. And they just slam stuff like that in this movie. And they do the Rocky Horror thing. I cannot stand Rocky Horror. Yeah, but I mean I, I'll give them a pass on that. This, I will. Like, but it's just like I did not. I don't remember those things as like I remember these people being much more normal in my memories of this movie is I guess what I was getting what you, a lot more like me and a lot less like wow these kids are outsiders because they're not they're, they're not, not outsiders. outsiders they're not outsiders real outsiders are stranger than this they're, they're, they're like outsider chic yeah they're like cool outsiders right they're like the restaurant crowd have you ever gone out with the restaurant crowd in this town? No. What are you talking about? You've never gone out with, like, the people who, like, wait tables oh, and Oh, like stuff John's friends? Out? They're terrifying. Yeah, that's this group of yeah, people. Yeah, <laughs> they're terrifying. I, I I don't know. There's just something about this whole group of people that makes my skin kind of crawl. Now, I, I will say that, like, um, Patrick is an exceptional friend to Charlie. Patrick is a wonderful human. Yeah, just an absolutely great role model, a great human being. Uh, really, honestly, takes the whole thing with his boyfriend really well. I don't know that he does. He's pretty clinically depressed there towards the end. I mean, yeah, I, I agree with that, but he figures his stuff out. Yeah, and he goes off to... Man, I want to live he in seems... Chicago where everybody goes to college across the freaking country. There's Pittsburgh. Or Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah, it seems like he, he figured him stuff, his stuff out. And he was he was really helpful to Charlie. He continued to be a good friend to Charlie. Even when Charlie kind of messed up and did the, oh, wow, you got to kiss the prettiest girl in the room. And he kisses Sam, which like, wow, you kind of suck for that. But... The kids also suck for putting him in that position because, like, Charlie doesn't ever really adapt to anything at all. Yeah. Which is, which is fine. Like, was... Charlie's, Charlie's messed up in the head, obviously. That's that's his whole shtick. I mean, that's part of the movie, yeah. That's his whole shtick is, like, he doesn't get it. He's never going to get it, which is fine. But, like, these kids need to be better, not more delicate necessarily, but they need to put him... Not, don't put him in positions to be like that. Where, like, right. to put him they, in situations yeah, think, where he just doesn't get it. Yeah, he definitely doesn't get it. He also, like, I think there's a interesting story to be told about him and the girl that he liked. That the girl that liked him... I can't remember her Mary name. Elizabeth. Mary Elizabeth. About how, like, she liked him and he felt this weird pressure to date her even though he wasn't interested. It was like, it was a situation that could never happen. It's like the boy that nobody could like is... Is the, yeah. Is is taken by a girl he could never love. Right, he's not allowed to love. Or, well, no, he is... He, is, he his, wouldn't allow His heart is taken by a girl he's not with, but is with someone else. Right, right, but he's not even ever really invested in that relationship. No, not at all. She also sucks. Like, she doesn't let, she doesn't let him talk. Right. She, she just goes on and on exist. and on. She, he's just, he's, a, he's a, not a trope trophy boyfriend for her but he's like he serves the purpose of right it was like this really interesting freshman kid showed up in our group and he writes all these amazing things and is incredibly thoughtful and right i'm not gonna listen to or read anything that he does but i am going to take advantage of the fact that i know that he's interesting right and it's like i do and love the the relationship that he and patrick have though because patrick is like kind of that older brother to him patrick kisses him. yeah i have no problem with that just to just to see if it would work yeah i think they were both see curious. if there was a spark there there wasn't and they were no, they were like, oh, nope, nope that's, that's not weird. it. That's <laughs> weird. Um, and yeah, I mean, Patrick gets a little distracted, but he's also just super kind to Charlie. He buys him the suit. He like clearly listens to the kid. Yeah, he definitely cares about Charlie. Yeah. I thought it was interesting that everybody called Patrick nothing when he like made that joke in like one class with a bunch of freshmen. Now the whole school knows this joke. Well, yeah, that was that was one of those things where it's like, oh, okay, nobody likes Patrick. Got it. I just don't believe people that are that would people happen. are bothered by Patrick's existence. Because he's, I knew Patrick, he's the gay kid. Yeah, I knew the Patrick of our high school, and he was a little outspoken, but all the same, a pretty nice kid. Yeah, if we're thinking about the same like, person, which I don't know if we are, but whatever. I think we are. He was in our class. Yeah, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were super mean to him, Is but he was super nice. Were we super mean to him? Everyone was. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, no, everyone was super mean to him. He was the gay kid. I'm not just, like, writing this off and saying, oh, we were good people for this. It's like, this is the kind of thing that haunts me. Mm. Is it like, the, and that kid just responded endlessly with, with just kindness and every time. I remember, uh, were you in, it was you and me that had, uh, loose dude together right yeah and we made the video and he like invited everyone to submit their video we had this like video project where we had to make like a 1920s theme video we obviously <laughs> we obviously did not submit ours but he like invited everyone to submit their videos to like the local museum and they would have been featured in some like probably sizable publication <laughs> I have nightmares about that video. <laughs> about that video. <laughs> that if that ever, because I'm, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for the day when we get famous and it's like, wow, these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I've, I've, I try to check to see if it's like on my Facebook or anything. It's not. I, I, I you, you, and if, if it's anywhere, it's on, because the school computers have obviously been destroyed. It is not on But my if it's anywhere, it's on whatever, wherever, whatever happened to the desktop in your parents' room or parents' den. I think it's still there. <laughs> You might want to just destroy that computer. Just be like, hey, mom and dad, by the way, just yeet it out the window. <laughs> we 
we're gonna burn it. I bought you a new one. Don't you worry. <laughs> That is, yeah, because we made it on your mom and dad's computer. That is the, I believe, where the only surviving copy could possibly be. I mean, Lustig might have one, but... I don't think so. I don't think we turned it in. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> I have nightmares. Like, I've woken up in a cold sweat before and be like, the video got out. As people know. <laughs> people know MacArthur Park. Oh, God. Uh, imagine if they'd found that while Michael Cole was on the team at Tech. <laughs> <laughs> where he was like a Klansman. <laughs> God. We were actors, Ethan. Actors. How did we not think that was a bad idea? I, don't I know. remember being yeah. super proud of that project, and everybody was just like, "Wow!" <laughs> and you and you and me and Michael and Ali all looked at each other like, "What? <laughs> we made a good video." <laughs> I mean, great it's like a silent film, man. We did the whole thing. I think part of the problem was that I used music from the 80s, and I was so proud of myself going into it, and then everybody else used music from the 20s, and I was like, I would never have even thought of that. Anyway. So, oh, I don't, yeah, I don't even want to talk about that anymore. It stressed <laughs> me out. You started talking about the video project from the class, I was like, ah. 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 Lord. Nightmares, Eden. Nightmares. Nightmares. All right. Um, so what do you, what do you, what are your takeaways from this movie? I, actually, I have a takeaway from this movie. I, I figured it out, okay? I figured out what you're supposed to take away from these teen movies. Finally, now that I am 25, okay? <laughs> Here's what I have figured out. Based on this movie and the last movie and thinking about the other movies that have come out is like, good things are going to happen to you if you just talk to people. Yeah, networking is key. No, not networking. I mean, yes, networking, but, like, all of these people's problems. Like, Simon's problems would have been solved if he just talked to his friends. Charlie's problems would have been solved if he just talked to his friends. LJ's problems would have been solved if she just talked to her friends. It's like, yes. your friends are going to be there for you if you're not to them and you just be straight with them that's it and if they're not then you need new friends it's always good to cut toxic people out of your life yeah 100 percent. that's that's what th these movies are trying to tell you is like charlie could have saved himself so much struggle if he just talked to his parents talked to his friend i know it's not that easy i get that it's not that easy and sometimes you have to have a breakdown you have to hit bottom i get it I understand what they're saying but it's like charlie's parents didn't even know what the problem was yeah i feel like there's a lot of lessons to parenting in these films I, I, where it's like and honestly i think this one focused less on the parents than it should have. Yeah, I, I felt like at the end when they revealed that, like, Aunt Helen was touching him, I was like, whose sibling was Aunt Helen? Well, that, and it's just like, the dad was like, they gave the dad a couple stereotypical dad moments, but it felt like stuff they almost just left out is like, oh, Charlie doesn't have a relationship that he, where he feels like he could talk to his parents, but they never really showed that at all. Right. It was like, obviously he was afraid to tell him about Aunt Helen, but we didn't never really know why. It's like, the parents seemed pretty understanding about most things. Like, they right. had a kid that was in the hospital, and then the first day of high school, they were just like, hey, Charlie, are you okay? Like, on your first day of school like are you, are you good is everything fine you're good cool and let's move yeah, on charlie was like yep everything's fine and your dad was just like cool thought it would be you're a good kid you're smart good and kid. he makes some he makes some dad comments but not not enough to like be relevant the penguins yeah. allergic to defense yeah but that was a good moment that wasn't like a oh this is a, a overbearing over masculine you know, forces things on his son, dad. It was just like, the kid asked about hockey. Hey, dad, what do you think of them penguins this year? And the dad was just like, oh, thank God, a conversation I can be a part of. <laughs> a conversation I relate to. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Yeah. And it, it, normally it's, and it, it, maybe it's a testament to the movie. Maybe it's a degradation for the movie. But normally there's a lot of that parent conflict in them in the movie. And this one didn't focus so much on that. And I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it was more about the, the group of friends. Yeah. But it felt like the um, parent conflict was written in the book. And then the director was like, well, I got to include a little bit of it because the director's the same guy. And then just didn't include the right parts because like obviously think also, obviously there's some sort of issue with charlie and his parents and like he feels like he can't talk to his parents i think it would be hard to tell obviously i've never been in this situation well not obviously i've never been in this situation um uh, but i think it would be very hard to tell my parents one of your siblings touched me oh for sure for sure i'm not saying it's, <laughs> i'm not saying it's gonna be easy but it it like it, it the movie clearly shows that charlie doesn't he can't talk to his parents but he doesn't show why it just shows right. that he doesn't talk to his parents and then his parents are just super nice to him well and there's also i think part of the reason they do that is because part of the reveal is what it is it's like you think the whole time he had aunt helen to talk to and then she died but what was really happening was aunt helen was the problem Aunt helen was the problem right and he has this like repressed memory of her of all these positive things but she's the source right. of all his discomfort and like his siblings are super nice to him yeah his siblings and like are super he, cool. yeah the, like, the brother's just like see i knew you'd find somebody like i'm sorry i can't be around like you know you're doing all right i'm glad that you have friends that can help you out while i'm not here and he calls the sister and the sister's not like ew why is my brother calling me the sister's right. like She's get like, an ambulance to my house right now like, yeah, my brother's about to kill himself. Right. Like, she understands the situation. She's there to help. She's kind to him throughout the whole movie. He, you know, she gives him the CDs or the mixtapes, which I still think it's horrifically sad that Charlie's favorite song is a song off a mixtape that his sister's lame boyfriend 
gave her that she didn't want. That is like, that really sad. says something about Charlie and like his lack that, of experience prior to that friend group. Yeah, lack of experience with any friends at all. It also only lightly touches on his only previous friend who yeah, killed, killed himself. himself. Br- really brushes that one over. Well, not really. I mean, that's that's the reason that. Um, Emma Watson and Ezra Miller like become his friend. Is that of pity? Yeah, which sucks. But they end up being good friends. They just they got to get there. Sam has to learn to be a good friend before she can be a good friend. Patrick has to learn to kind of be himself. Patrick had a weird situation. Like I've never. Yeah, Patrick's going through. What I thought was interesting was that like every character had this conflict that they were working their way through, and then they included this blonde girl who they re- referred to as Goth. And who Alice steals to know jeans. About her. Alice steals jeans. Why is she a character at all? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, like, like there's these really cool, complex stories. Right. This girl used to steal jeans, but at Christmas time, she buys she jeans, jeans for Mary Elizabeth. <laughs> she's going to go to NYU and be an, a film major. Yeah. Like, what is going on? I don't know why she's in the movie. <laughs> Who is this I person? don't know. I have no idea. I guess it's to give Mary Elizabeth a friend, like a tag along. Yeah, something like that. So it's like... Yeah. To show that, like, you know, if, if the friend group split up, obviously Ezra Miller and Emma, right. Emma Watson would still be friends. And Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, and they've got that older friend, Bob, who is, like, in his 20s. Yeah, and, like, buys them all weed yeah, and it is just and stuff. Like, <laughs> that guy would not be cool. Like, I know the stoners. Like, I've met the local stoners. Those dudes would not be cool with, like, a 14-year-old hanging out. Yeah, that's the other thing you got to remember about this movie. I never he is would have believed freshman. that Logan Lerman was a freshman. <laughs> yeah. It's not what freshmen look like. If you look, if if you we'll post a picture remade of us from this freshman movie, year. if you remade this movie, I would want like uh, hold this on. This is the issue with every every teen movie though. Is that they're, they're obviously, obviously too adults. Old. Like if you remade this movie, I would want like Gate and Meta. Matarazzo as who the the kid with the curly hair from Stranger Things. Oh, Dustin. Yeah, yeah. they look That's like kids. That's a freshman in high school. <laughs> no, they're they're younger than that. Are they? Yeah. How old is Gaten these days? I don't know how old he, he's supposed to be. They're supposed to be like ten. He was born two thousand two, so he is older than a freshman in high school. He's sixteen. Yeah, so he would be like. But this is a, just to give this you an is idea. a problem they're actively running into with Stranger Things. Right? Is it like these kids are too old? And I said the same thing about Stranger Things. I'm like the, the high school sophomores or whatever. Like like. Uh, Who's the guy that looks like John Ralphio in that show, but isn't John Ralphio? Joe Keery? Oh, the... Steve Harrington? Yeah. Like, he he is easily, like, 21, 22, maybe even older. He's our age. He was born in 93. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like, I would never have believed that that guy is... Is a junior in high school. Yeah. That, like, would still be in high school the next year. You know who could still play a high schooler is Winona Ryder. She could play anything. I don't know about that. (laughs) I don't know if I'd believe Winona Ryder is a high schooler. (laughs) Which is crazy. I mean, Winona Ryder has has really not aged much. Like, the difference between Winona Ryder and Beetlejuice and Winona Ryder and Stranger Things is, like, maybe five years. But it's actually, like, 25 years. Right. Ugh, Winona Ryder. Ugh, Beetlejuice. I've said it twice now. Be careful. (laughs) I can't say it again. (laughs) Michael Keaton's gonna come out of my computer monitor. You know, I really like this movie, and I don't think... I don't know how to process it in such a way. It is a very important movie. It is a movie that it everybody is. needs to see. Um, the the lines that Paul Rudd talks about with the, the we accept the love we think we deserve, and then with Charlie saying that, that we are infinite at the end, is very important. I don't think Paul Rudd was the right choice for that character. I don't, I don't know that it was wrong. I you know. immediately, I was just like, this is Scott Lang. And I get that that's been ruined, like, since this movie came out. But um, anyway, yeah, I, I don't think Paul Rudd's the right choice for the character. I, I just don't think he sold it. If there's I'll one say, acting as a result that I think it probably wasn't up to snuff in this movie. Yeah, I'll say as a result of watching all of these movies, um, they, they make movies about great high school English teachers. Yeah. You know, and I think the reason for that is the high school English teacher is like the most direct connection to the outside world, and like adult world. Right. The outside world. And ideas. Like the arts. Yeah. The arts and ideas that you're not going to get from... Well, because like the, the high school English teacher gets teachers. to talk to yeah about Henry David Thoreau and gets you to read Walton. And you can read... He can give you, you know, The Catcher in the Rye. He can give you all these books. And the the science teacher is just like, so this is how covalent bonds form. And it just right. doesn't come up. It's right. like grandiose ideas like that in high school aren't going to come up from rote memorization of Newtonian equations. Or, the, or right. you learning the quadratic formula. Like right. it, it's either history or, or English. And I think the reason, I think there's another teacher that often gets left off of this list when it comes to making movies about it. And I think there's a reason for it. And that teacher would be the, the music director. So I felt like in our high school experience, the teacher that we identified with most was our band director. Yeah, absolutely. And the reason was because we had the same teacher for like four classes for four years. It's like 16 classes total. Yeah. It's, I saw Brian Quickenbush right? a lot. Oh, yeah. I spent like half of my day 
every day with this guy right for like four years but i don't think that this might be against the grain i think you learn the most about arts and culture in english yes i learned i learned the most about arts and culture in my english classes and my foreign language classes yeah so classes where you study language right (laughs) it's like you know i had i had creative spanish teachers throughout my my eight years taking spanish classes that used literature and used stuff to to talk about the culture we had deep conversations we had tough conversations and that and and the same with english classes it's very important and and that's the sign of a good english teacher is getting you to have a bigger conversation the sign of a good math teacher or a good or a good science teacher is getting you to understand the information they're teaching you but the sign of a good language teacher language arts teacher is 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 making you really learn something right like there there are no wrong answers in in high school english well there's poorly written there absolutely are and and, but that's that's not what I'm talking about. It's like there, there's a lack of effort. There's a lack of skill. But it's like you you can't really. And this is the thing. And we came we came back to this with Dead Poets Society. And this is something I think is so important is that like when you're asking a question about a book, there really aren't stupid questions. Right. I agree with you there. Um, <coughs> and I think I think where a lot of English teachers trip up is like when they've been tenured and they've had a long time being there. And and it does come back to the question of drawing the line between understanding that wherefore art thou Romeo means why is your name Romeo is a different type of interpretation than, you know, what does the star-crossed lovers say about society? Right. And those are both very important things to learn. But, you know, one of them is something that you can you can teach and one of them is something you have to almost coach. Right. You know what I'm saying? So let's do some rankings. Okay. Are you yeah. ready? Is that okay with you? Yep. Sorry, I just got, I had a bunch of weird notifications pop in my head all of a sudden. Um, well, first of all, do you have any final thoughts about the movie? Anything that you think we missed? Anything that you want to circle back to real quick? Those kind of were my final thoughts. Okay. Um, you know, I, th- I just... That's yeah. that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, moving on to... What else do we need to move on to? Rankings. We're getting close to the end of our year one rankings, Ethan. How do you feel? I feel good. We're going to... We're we, we decided to go ahead and we're going to... Make a poster of the the year one list. Yeah, once it's done. Um, once it's done. So that should only take me uh, like a week to do after that. Yeah. Um. So we can have those up. I've got some good ideas for it. I think they're gonna inc- it's gonna include the breakfast foods if if I can put all that together and it, it looks all right. Do it as like a menu. I don't know about that. that would be cool. Yeah, but it kind of needs to be an order. Yeah, you make it an order. Do like the McAdoo's menu. <laughs> in alphabetical order? Well, I mean, no, you do it. In I know, but order, like but... even then, it's like some of our stuff is definitely under like appetizers or there's categories is the problem. You run into categories. It's categories. We'll, we'll figure it out. I'm, there's a lot of things to put on one piece of paper, so we'll see what it ends up looking like. But yeah. there is going to be some sort of list that you can hang on your wall and do fun things with. We'll, we can sign it if you want us to. We don't have to, but... All right, so let's see. Ethan? I have no idea where to put this. Is this... I'm trying to find something that it's similar to. Well, it's better than To All the Boys I Loved Before. Okay, where did that end up? Like 30-something? That is like 44. 41, according to this current non-updated list. Yeah. Better than To All the Boys I've Loved Before. Is it better than Half-Blood Prince? Uh, yeah. As, I mean, is it out of this territory? Is I'm it better than Revenge of the Sith? I'm trying to figure out where, where we're at. Yeah, it's it's better than Ant-Man. Ooh, I was going to say it's not as good as Ant-Man. Really? But well, because I was looking, at, I was looking up at, at Back to the Future Part 3 and, and The Winter Soldier, and I think it's better than both of those. I don't think it's better than Ready. Mm, yeah, I do. This is like one of my favorite movies, but it's, it's sort of... It, I would feel wrong putting it in like even in the top 20. I don't think it's better than Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, I don't no. think it's better than the Lego movie, no. Guardians of the Galaxy. Galaxy, Titanic, maybe. I still think Incredibles 2 is overrated, but. Let's put it under Titanic. Okay, then. I can do that. I can live with that. Sure. I, I feel weird saying it's better than Age of Ultron, only because they're just so different. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, definitely a strange list that we've got going on here. But, you know, that's how it works here at Bacon and Egg. Yeah. But I'm cool with that. Do you have a breakfast food for this? Um, I do. Yeah, go for it. This is Waffle House. Okay. That's how I kind of felt about so, King's, whatever it was. Was it was just a Waffle uh, House? The restaurant they kept going to? Is to me, it felt like a Waffle House knockoff. I thought he was going to Cane's. Was it Cane's? Yeah, like Raising Cane's. I don't think Cane's. it was Raising Cane's. No? It sounded um, like, it sounded I feel like, like King's. Like, I feel like this is Waffle House because to me, this reminds me of when we would stay out late and then get up early but not be hung over and go get Waffle House. I don't even know this is a real thing that happened, but it is a memory that I feel in my mind. This, this, and maybe it's just because it happened in the same time period, but this, and this may be a hard memory for you and I'm not going to talk about why, but this movie reminds me of the time that we went to Waffle House in the snow. With, um, people. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that, but to me this is more like, it goes back further than that. To me, like, the thing that this reminds me of more than anything else is band parties at Maddie Springer's house. That is what this movie feels like. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Definitely. But they didn't serve breakfast at those. No, they didn't. <laughs> but so the closest thing to me is 
is like Waffle House in high school, which I don't even know was we something didn't. we like made a tradition we, of until college. Yeah. We used to go to yeah. IHOP after marching band in college. Yeah, we did. At yeah, like, we did. It's a zebra. At like 11 at night. Because it was open. Yeah. Thanks. It's a zebra. That's what I'd say to people. <laughs> the hat. Yeah. I like your hat. Thanks. It's a zebra. <laughs> I forgot about forgot about that hat you bought that hat to st louis for, so for people curious i had this hat that was very obviously a zebra <laughs> it had like <laughs> like a nose and eyes and was black and white striped and had like a mane and it was a cool hat it was like a it was like a winter hat and it was a cool hat and people would be like wow i love your hat and i would be like thanks, thanks. it's a zebra it's a zebra <laughs> Debra, you look like a zebra. <laughs> All right, cool. So, what is this from Waffle House, or is this just the idea think, of Waffle House? No, I think I think it's it's like covered hash browns and, and like a waffle, like a you like definitely a, like a, a plain waffle. waffle. Yeah, I mean you get the syrup. Well, yeah, yeah, but not like a not like a peanut butter waffle. No, that no, was much later in our collective life. That we discovered the, the peanut, peanut butter, butter waffle, waffle and the the glory of it. D- did Mike's parents serve breakfast? Did you ever sleep over at Mike's like I did? I think this is a me and Mike thing. I slept over at Mike's. I don't remember breakfast. After the band parties? No. After the band parties, I would sleep at Mike's every time. And we would stay up all day, like, and all night playing Halo. It was awesome. Yeah. I did not do that. <laughs> I think it was just a me and yeah. Mike thing. It was a good time. Okay. Uh, what else? I think that's it. <laughs> There's no villain here. This is, oh, pff, Aunt Helen. Right, but, like... <laughs> <laughs> I thought the reveal of the villain was really good. I did too. I would give that like a nine out of ten. I, you know, I, I sobbed. I didn't sob. Aunt Helen didn't love him. Your sister's sleeping. Alexa, we're not gonna have this problem again. This is not gonna start again now that you're back in my bedroom. Anyway, I think that's it. I think that is it. Thank you for listening if you to like... Bacon and Eggs talk about perks of being a wallflower. It's sort of been a lot of fun. <laughs> um, if you want to buy anything that we have, it's in the description. We have T-shirts and a bunch of merch on teespring and we have more merch coming soon and i'm holding myself accountable to that and i'm gonna do it tomorrow morning so it'll be available there's also blog posts on patreon i wrote one on monday about jurassic park tyler wrote tyler wrote one on friday about a simple favor and now we have both written them about the hash browns from this week if you want those early or access to them on patreon literally you need to just donate one dollar a month you'll also get a neat Um, thank you card you will we're working on those tomorrow we have a few of those to write yes yes queen yeah so if you want to buy anything you want to do anything or you want to support us or you want to support our lovely graphic artist Vaishan or our lovely music artist Cytrix all of the stuff is in the description in the doobly-doo and you can go down there and find it and yeah so I trust you as a person to be able to go find it I do too I trust you so much person I think you're such a wonderful person and if nobody's told you today I just want you to know you're beautiful you're wonderful and we care about you and we're so happy that you're here you are infinite you are infinite thank you person for listening this has been Bacon and Eggs with Tyler and Ethan. We've never get we will never gonna get the hang of this. No, this ending part is very We'll never hard. get the hang of it. It's been almost a year and we've never gotten the hang of it. I just like the closure is not easy. Alright, now you gotta you gotta say the I last thing. I gotta say the thing. last thing. This one I've got. Yeah. Thank you again for listening to Bacon and Eggs. I've been Ethan Edgehill. He's been Tyler Carlin, and until next week, Arriva Dirchi. Accept the love we think we deserve.